tonight on Animal House. The SPCA hunts for an injured dog and his streetwise mate. They're just on the train tracks, gone over behind those trains and gone down to the left there. A cat fights to survive after being shot in the head. And that looks like it's an entry wound just there on the side of her face. Yeah, it's a pretty sick, cool thing to do. And a babe gets lost in the city. I must say, that is the cutest animal we've had all week, yeah. isn't it? The SPCA is investigating reports of an injured black dog seen limping near a Mangari house. Hello! <laughs> you frightened me while answering the door. I'm from the SPCA. My name's Sue. Do you have a black dog? Yes. Yes? OK. We had a call um, that he might have an injured leg. Something... Oh, it's not mine. OK, but it lives here? No. Ah. Oh. It's not mine. I got a black one, but... Not my one. You have a black dog, yeah. but your one isn't the one with the injured leg. So where's your black dog at the moment? Oh, I'm Around. Can I go and have a look? Is yeah. he friendly? Yeah. Do you want to come with me? What's his name? No name. No name. He's not here. He's not here. So that's his bed. That's his house. Do you know who owns the black dog that's got the limp? No, I don't know. Because people seem to think it lives here, the one with the limp. No, they come around here, but I don't know who's on that dog. So that dog comes here too. Mm. Do you feed it or anything? No. OK, thank you. The woman claims that she knows of the injured black dog, but doesn't own it. She owns a different black dog with no name. I find it fascinating that, you know, people have dogs and they don't really know where they are or have a way of calling them or know what their names are or... <sighs> My plan will be to come back tomorrow and do this all over again. And if I keep coming back, eventually the dog will be here. At the SPCA hospital, vet staff are about to assess a pet caught in the line of fire. This is Petrie. She's been shot by a slug gun. The owner of the cat has surrendered her over. It's because she really fears for the cat's safety if it goes back to the neighbourhood. Uh, reason being she um, thinks that it was a neighbour who actually shot the cat. I assume you're, you're going to be calling the police and that they're going to be going around and talking to him and everything. She did phone the police and they've been out to speak to the alleged shooter. And that looks like it's an entry wound just there on the side of her face. Yeah. Petrie has now been living with a pallet lodged in her head for five Days. She wasn't eating or anything like that. Um, she was looking a, a little worse for wear when I picked her up. I'll just turn around, I'll just have a look inside her mouth. The cat's refusal to eat may mean she's developing an infection. Oh, there is a little bit of a wound on the back of her mouth too. It could just be that there's some physical damage to its larynx and its soft palate, which makes it a little bit painful. So we'll give it some antibiotics and pain relief and hopefully with some soft food, easy to eat stuff, it will start eating again. It's a waiting game to see if Petrie will survive her shooting injuries. Sue's returning to Mangari in search of a lame black dog that's been repeatedly seen at this house. Now, let's go and have a look. Puppy! The woman who lives here claims she owns a black dog, but it's not injured. Hello. The dog's behaviour is disturbing. Despite having her turf invaded, she is completely submissive. This is very bizarre behaviour. <laughs> I mean, generally, you approach a dog, it's, it's, it does something. It lets you know how it's feeling. Let's pop this lead over your head, eh? There you go. Sue wants to lead the dog into a clearing to assess her, but she's not cooperating. Right. OK, this is a dog that has never 
had a lead or anything round, that reaction is very typical. So she's panicking. So I just need to try and let her know it's OK and we're not hurting her. Come on. Come on. Ah, crikey, this is the most submissive dog <laughs> that I've ever come across in my life. Let's have a look at your walk. Come on. She's not hurt. Well, physically, she's not hurt anyway. I mean, she's extraordinarily timid and just absolutely terrified. She's probably not had a hell of a lot of handling or socialisation. Sue suspects this dog belongs to the woman who lives here and she has concerns about its welfare. Regardless of, even if I don't find this injured dog, I'd still want to have a chat with her about looking after this dog and what a dog needs. It's absolutely petrified. At the animal village, a woman needs help with a little pig she found wandering far from home. Hello. I found a pig. Yeah, I can see this. Where else did you find it? Um, I was getting into my car to take my um, dog for a walk, and he was running down the centre of the road. I live in Pakaranga, and we don't see pigs very often running down the road. This is the only pig I've ever seen the whole time I've lived there. How this babe got lost in the city is a mystery. He also has some puzzling injuries. His front leg. Um, and back leg as well. He's got quite a bad cut on both sides. He's been left outside and his ears have been really badly sunburnt and they really hurt when you touch them. Despite his wounds, he seems confident with people. I know that pigs have got the same intelligence as a dog and he behaves just like a puppy, so he follows me around everywhere that I go. So yeah, he's really smart. He looks really oh, comfortable yeah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's lovely, but I have a big dog, I can't keep him. Susan would love to keep the piglet, but her dog was getting jealous. My dog isn't coping, no, not really. Um, and he really likes him, but um, not in, in a way I think that would be good for a long-term relationship, so. I almost hate to take him away from you. I must say, that is the cutest, cutest, cutest animal we've had all week, yeah. isn't it? The little pig's adventures are far from over. He's now off to the hospital for an assessment of his injuries. See you, pig. <laughs> Sue is back in Mangari to discuss the welfare of the timid dog she found at this property. Anybody's home. We're going to have a see if the dog's there. Hello. But as she goes to check on her, Sue first came okay. here looking for an injured black dog. There's the dog. Now the chase is on. After three days of searching, Sue has finally found the injured black dog. That's the dog we got the original call about, and he's got a clearly broken foreleg. He'll be in a hell of a lot of pain. Armed with a catch pole and some dog food, Sue approaches the lame dog. There they are. There's a head. The injured dog looks like he's teamed up with a corgi. Puppy! As soon as I get within 30 or 40 feet, they're gone. So Sue calls for backup. Search the ark. Inspector Todd Neal arrives to join the chase. The black dog taking it off down on the main road. I'll stay with him as long as I can. They're just on the train tracks, gone over behind those trains and gone down to the left there. After an exhaustive search, the cunning canines have given the inspectors the slip. These dogs get so streetwise and they just know, they have this instinct when people are trying to catch them. It's amazing. Hi. Hello. Beauty. 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 Look at Beauty. you. The piglet who got lost in the city is about to get a medical check. All right, let's have a little look over here. I'm sure there'll be some squealing soon. Staff are puzzled by some injuries on his leg. On the whole, um, he's, you know, he's quite vigorous and fairly happy. He's got some scabby sunburned ears, which we can sort out. Um, he's got some old injuries to his right front leg and also an old injury through the back as well. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, he could do with some antibiotics, particularly for the right front neck, it's a little bit um, swollen. Do you think it could be from being tied up or what problems with you? It's difficult to say with any certainty. It's been there for a while, it'll heal up fine, that's the main thing. What caused the injuries remains a mystery, but the painful sunburn could easily have been prevented. I'm just putting some filter back on, which is like a sunblock for animals. Meanwhile, the lost pig's details are being loaded on a pet lost and found site. There we go, there's our wee piggy. So hopefully the owners of the pig, if they look on pets on the net, they will see that there is a pig that's been found and come in and claim him. SPCA inspectors have returned to Mangani in search of the two dogs on the run. Do you know where they live? The black dog with the injured leg? Oh, no. No. Thank you. Sue is becoming increasingly concerned about the welfare of the lame dog. It's a foreleg, and you can see the way it's kind of flapping in the wind. That it, it would, it's probably a straight fracture, straight break. But it'd be horrendously painful. But you know, it's amazing how these dogs cope with the most horrendous injuries. The lame dog is nowhere to be seen. Hey, sweetie. So Sue turns her attention to the timid girl. Hello. Um, I spoke to the lady who lives here last night. We talked about this dog and she basically said she didn't want to keep her um, and asked if we would take her, so I'm more than happy with that. Do you want me to try and lift her out? Yeah. She won't bite you. No. You can pretty much do, do anything with her. Hello, sweet boy. Good girl. He's a cute oh, baby. That's not so bad, is it? There is nothing physically wrong with the dog, but fixing her psychological problems will be a challenge. There you go. Oh, oh and she's just done a poo. She's pooed and weed herself in terror. <laughs> she's probably never been picked up in her life. She lives there, the owners live there, but there's <laughs> there'll be no interaction. It's uh, two different worlds. Two different worlds. There has been a breakthrough in the case of the lost piglet. Some good news, um, we found the owner of this little piglet. He was from a pig farm, um, he got rolled on by his mum, which explains his injuries on one of his legs. So they've been nursing him back to health at their place in Pakaranga. Um, fortunately someone left the gate open and he's taken himself for a little walk. And... His owners want him back, but there is a complication. Unfortunately he can't go back to their place in Pakaranga and they're having to take him back to um, the farm where he came from because uh, council bylaws are that you can't have pigs in a suburban area. But he is um, a lot stronger and a lot bigger now so he is able to go back with his siblings on the farm. So all good. School teacher Tessa Willis has been caring for the piglet called Bailey. We went up to my husband's partner's farm who has pigs and mum had sat on him and crushed him quite severely so we got a box and a baby bottle and we've just been looking after him until he was strong enough to go home. Hello my little man. <laughs> oh who is it? And this afternoon we'll take him back up to the farm where he was born and we'll just go from there with him. Uh, be sad to see him back up there but the intention was to raise him so he was strong enough to go. You say bye bye. But before Bailey returns to the pig farm, he's off to Tessa's house to say goodbye to the family. X-rays of the cat shot with a pellet gun are about to reveal the extent of her injuries. The examination of the cat showed that the bullet came in through the front and through the side of the nose. Mm. And it's tracked all the way through from here, tracked through here and come to rest just under the spine, just next to the spine here. Yeah. And these little dark white spots may be fragments of the bullet or they may in fact be a piece of broken bone that's being dragged off by the bullet as it's come through here. Peter could operate to remove the pellet but this may not be enough to save her life. Removing the pellet's not a problem because it's very close to the skin. The, the real issue when it comes to her survival obviously is determined by the amount of damage that was done as the bullet passed through her nose, through the soft pellet, out the back of her throat. You've got the risk of infection because slugs are slow moving, they don't, they don't enter as sterile like a high powered bullet does so you've got a risk of infection, you've got damage to the nose, the back of the throat. Um, so what we'll be doing is managing the infection, trying to manage the infection, pain relief, um, supplementing fluids and food if we have to in the short term. And then really it's just the case of whether the cat, those, those injuries through her face are going to heal. At this stage, there is nothing more the SBCA can do. Either the damage has been is such that the cat can manage it herself and it will heal up or it won't. And only time will tell. 
It's time for Bailey the Piglet to say goodbye to his city family and city life. We're going to miss him totally. He's just like a member of the family, but I mean, the idea was rescuing him, getting him healthy, and getting him back. So, yeah, we'll miss him. We like giving away one of my kids. Your kids want to leave home? <laughs> Come on, Billy. Tess's son Joshua has developed a special bond with the piglet. This is where Bailey sleeps. He sleeps on my bed. And yeah, he snores a lot. Sometimes he like sleeps down the sand, but most of the time he just sleeps with me in my arms. He sort of bosses the cats around, and the cats really get angry. He always wants to play with them, but they really don't like him. Um, it's going to be pretty lonely. I'm going to miss him a lot. Bailey needs to get back to the farm before he becomes too domesticated. But could it already be too late? <laughs> Bailey gets a big welcome, but the enthusiasm is not returned. I thought it'd be OK, but look at the size of them, and he's, he's a baby. He's a baby. No, he's had enough. Come here. Tessa gets cold feet. Bailey's return to the farm may be short-lived. I don't think he recognises any of them, especially one as his mother. There's been a development for Petrie. The cat shot with a pellet gun. Petrie's now started eating, which is really, really good. We're really, really wrapped about that. Um, so Petrie's going to go into surgery, and fingers crossed that the surgery goes well for him, and he makes a really good recovery. Basically, we're just clipping up the area so Peter can get at the area where the air gun pellet is. Um, and we have located it underneath the skin, so we can just see it there between our fingers. There's no obvious infection developing. The cat's eating and drinking. Everything else is going well. So removing the air rifle pellet's actually the easy part. The cat's done the hard part. And the, the air rifle pellet, as we know, has passed through the nose, through the back of the throat, and has lodged itself just under the skin right here. Usually not a need to make a very big hole. You know, ear rifle pellets, actually, we do find them incidentally on x-rays, so it's not uncommon, unfortunately. So there are obviously a few people out there who think that taking pot shots at cats is entertainment, but unfortunately, often that can go wrong. The culprit of this crime could face up to three years in prison or a $50,000 fine. As far as this, cat's go, this cat goes, it's fortunate that when the bullet went through from the nose through the back of the throat, it, it missed all the vital organs, you, you know, any higher, it could have gone through the eyes, it could have hit the brain, gone through the brain, it could have taken out the carotid arteries and blood vessels, major blood vessels, so fortunately for this cat, it's missed all of those. Um, and now it looks like the cat's going to be fine. After seven days at the animal village, the timid dog has made little progress. It's a sad day. Um, uh, we've tried so hard with her, we've, and she's just a basket case. We've done all the normal stuff. Um, she's been here for a week now, and she's there's not even a milli thing of improvement. She won't walk on a lead. She's absolutely terrified of everything. And you know, at this point in time, we have to question how humane it is to actually even try with her. Um, I mean, I've just carried her out now and she, she's just pooed herself. That's how utterly frightened of the whole wide world she is. It's just sad. It's just really, really sad because she's an absolute sweetheart and I was sure that we could do something with her. Too much damage has been done. I hate to give up, but I just... I don't think we can bring her back now. Yeah, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Tess has called for help to release Bailey to his pig family. Hey, Tess. Hey, Josh. How's it going? Good. So, what's the intention of my baby? Oh, we'll put it over the fence, see how it goes with the others. Josh is more confident about the outcome of this reunion. Bailey. Guys, be nice to him. Oh. Finally, Bailey starts settling in. I was so apprehensive about putting him in here because of the size of them. And they're, they're great. He does look extremely happy. He's bouncing around. He's just sniffing everything. He's got such a big area to play in. Uh, I don't really want to leave him here, but I guess we have to. He seems pretty happy with the other pigs. It's been a 
Fun couple of weeks, but yeah, it's time to go. Time to let them go. Let them be a pig again. Sue is back at the railway tracks, where the two runaway dogs were last seen. It's been several weeks now since we've had any um, sightings. So they're so smart and so savvy and they're lying low and they, they've just learnt how to avoid people and avoid capture and so we'll just have to um, wait and see. They will show up again, I know it. She is also doing one last search at the property where she first spotted them. This is the only home they knew, this is where they originally started, so I'm just going to see if they've come back here on the off chance, so we'll go and have a look. And there is a surprise waiting for her. Ah, they have a new dog. Excellent. <laughs> the woman who surrendered her timid dog appears to have got a replacement. They've got a new dog. After what we went through with the last dog, it's tied to a tree, it's got no shelter. This is the thing, people get dogs and they have no idea what to do with them. They were quite more than happy for me to take the last dog. They didn't care, so why have they got another dog? Sue's had enough and is uplifting this puppy straight away. There you go. It's just a never-ending story, really. Um, just, uh, yeah. Came here looking for two other dogs and find a different dog. So while the dynamic duo are still at large, it's a happy ending for this pup. He's young, healthy and should be easily rehomed. Six weeks after being shot with a pallet gun, Petrie has a new home in a safe neighbourhood. I find you a lovely girl. She's always cleaning herself. She's such a fussy little cat. Very fussy and, you know, licking herself and grooming herself. You are a lovely girl. You're just so sweet. I had one um, died about three years ago, and then uh, I had my neighbour's cat who used to come over every day to see me. She had three cats, and then her cat died about um, three months ago, and that's when I decided I'd get a cat of my own again. But while June is giving her a new life, she is keeping one thing from her past. I'm calling her Petri, her SPCA name. It sort of suited her. I couldn't think of a nicer name. It's got a background, hasn't it? 